820. Good morning this morning. David Stokes was bounced yesterday. As he was on double secret probation, but he's back. David Stokes, Show Me Institute Policy Analyst. Good morning, David. Good morning, McGraw. Good morning, Kelly. Good morning, David. We were trying to, uh, you were trying to come up with some type of conversation about Ferguson um, that sort of fits your your expertise. And you found a story from Bloomberg Business Week that's really kind of interesting. It is. It is very interesting. And I think we all need to prepare to be, you know, deluged with why Ferguson type stories and and magazine articles or or TV stories that try to explain why. Right. And I think we all need to be very careful about about these articles because I think they're going to raise a lot of good points. But uh, the one in Business Week that you have it talks about how St. Louis is use heavy use of subsidies, and this is not me fitting it into my preconceived notion. Right. This is what they're saying. Heavy use of subsidies and competition against each other has really led to the led to the situation that allowed these riots to happen in Ferguson. And as much as I want to b- believe it, as much as I want to buy it, I I don't think they quite sell it there. And I'd encourage your listeners to check it out at Business Week. Yeah, I will, we'll, we'll, we'll tweet it out and put it out there. Um, and I don't think the, and I read it kind of quickly, so I'm, I'm uh, uh, and I'm also running on fumes, so I apologize if I misquote this exactly. <coughs> but I think his premise wasn't, it's a direct result. I think his premise was it's a, uh, when you give tax subsidies, you get less tax, uh, you get less in the tax rolls. Therefore, it's, something's got to give. People move out to cheaper cheaper tax areas. Um, that means the houses are, are worth less. The stores aren't there. The, the people aren't there to go to the stores. There's a new shiny shopping center down this, uh, the street. And so this ever-chasing TIF has has sort of injured the inner ring communities, one of them being Ferguson. And I think if you look at it in the big picture and kind of describe it as one of many factors, yeah. Right. And I think there's a lot of truth to that bigger picture way to look at it. But but Ferguson, the also article is Ferguson isn't able to provide services to its citizens because of this chasing subsidies, chasing that this businesses move all around. Right. And my knowledge of Ferguson is that Ferguson's, you know, we all know the the terrible details of the past week and a half up there, but Ferguson is not a poor community. The Ferguson government is able to provide the services it needs to its people. Ferguson is a, a middle-class community that's got different parts of its town, like many cities do. So I think if this story was applied to many of the other smaller cities, if that's where the riots were, right. you know, they'd have a better a better argument. The The fact is that a lot of people are going to come in here and from the outside and try and tell us why it's happening. And right. they're going to have a lot of good points to make. Right. But they're not going to know the cities here. So people just need to read these articles very, very critically. Because there are there are some outright errors in, in this Business Week article here. I, I think uh, it's so interesting you bring this up because I've been talking to people all around the other country. Radio stations have been calling me up. What's going on? Friends, you know, people, strangers, whatever. Fox News. And they're all like, why, why this? Why now? And I keep trying to explain to them that Ferguson is a, it's not Watts or Crenshaw or Harlem in the 1980s. Ferguson schools are credited. Correct. Um, uh, Emerson is right there. Um, they just built that Buzz Westfall shopping center. Um, they got a great farmer's market. They've got Express Scripts a half a mile away. They have UMSL a half a mile away. It was a it was a thriving community. Now, did it have its problems? Um, yes, just like everyone. But it wasn't like there was absolutely no way to get out from the object poverty of 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 Ferguson. It, that's just not true. Right. There are middle class areas of Ferguson. There are upper middle class historic areas of Ferguson. There are poor areas of Ferguson. Right. And yeah, as we all realize, the city had its issues. But I think the idea that nationally there's this image of Ferguson, as as you said, Watts or Harlem in the 1980s, right. is just something we need to push back on a little bit. I have no idea why this happened in Ferguson right here, right now. Right. I'm just I'm worried that people are going to come into this area and start telling us why when they don't when they don't really know the community. So one one thing that jumps out at me from this Business Week article is they cite as evidence for their arguments of the the fragmentation and the how businesses are, are, have moved all around and they've lost the tax base, that, um, to quote the magazine directly, that St. Louis's commute times are among the highest in the country, and that's evidence for their argument. Well, that's a total 
that's a total error. St. Louis commute times are, are are below average nationally and, and well below average compared to big cities. So so you have to read these things very critically because the media, particularly the national media, is under deadlines right. to fit things into a narrative on very short basis and they're not gonna get every they're not gonna get everything right here. And I appreciate shows like your shows and the other media people in St. Louis who aren't who are taking the time to get to know as much as they can right. and not pretending that you can instantly draw major conclusions and fit everything into that narrative. Because I love, I hate tax increment financing. I'd love to fit this into a narrative that right. TIFF caused these riots. Right. You know what? I don't, I don't think it's there. <laughs> um, in this article, uh, they quote the NAACP, St. Louis County, and the, N, uh, the John Gaskin, who was the spokesperson for the St. Louis County NAACP. He says Missouri is one of the most racist states in the country, but then goes on to say that Emerson and Boeing are some of the greatest corporate citizens the world has ever seen. Where is Boeing and where is Emerson? Right there. So, you know, it's you, you can't have it both ways. You can't be the racist, most racist thing in the world and then say, um, you know, is, is there institutional racism? Yes. Are there things that can we run our government better? I think you and everybody else would agree yes. But we also, in this article, I do find something fascinating that he says. Uh, people wanted to change to consolidate, but African-American leaders, and I'll get to that in a second, um, say, wait a minute. If you consolidate, then we're out of power again. So we like the small little community neighbors hoods because we get to be mayors and, and, and we get to be aldermen and we get to be all of those things. So I find that kind of interesting within the article. Well, and that's that's true. That's that's not necessarily an argument for or against consolidation, but absolutely, yeah. the municipal leaders of St. Louis County's ninety cities have traditionally been some of the strongest opponents of greater consolidation because they'd be they'd be out of their their gig would be up for them. They'd be out of, they'd yeah. be out of their jobs. The other thing was um, I got stopped in the supermarket the other day um, out in St. Charles and I was recognized. The guy knew me from, from the radio or whatever comes up to me and says, Hey, can I, can I, can I, can I give you some criticism? I was like, please go ahead. He says, will you stop calling it the African American community? He's like, it, it happened to be an African American came up to me. I was like, okay. I said, I don't understand. He says, just cause I look like the protesters and I look like the, this guy, now, that doesn't mean I'm part of this, the same community. He says, I got nothing to do with those people. I don't call you a KKK member when I see some KKK hooded guy. And I was like, sir, duly duly noted, I apologize. So it was a really interesting criticism of me, and I I will be guilty of that because and I think we all, so many of us talking about this say, you know, the African-American community. Well, the African-American the African -American community is is all shapes right. and sizes. Right, and the all African-American community is everywhere. Right, right. And, and it, it's not, they don't vote one way. They don't all think one way. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. you have African-American police officers. I you, think it's easy for people, I hate to say media, to say African-American community to consolidate that right. in their reporting. But right it, it, it's just not it true. just happens to be people who think a, a certain one way mm -hmm. who happen to be african-american and then there are people who think a different way who also happen to be african-american so it's an interesting i mean the, the guy was eloquent in how he ripped me to shreds <laughs> <laughs> and i was like duly noted i i will do my best to to separate um he, he was like don't lump me in with everybody else i'm my own guy i just happen to have dark skin and I was like, oh, I, okay, I duly noted I will do my best. But it was, it was a brilliant takedown, you know, in aisle seven at Schnucks. So, <laughs> well, as Kelly noted, it's long form talk radio, like what you have, has, we have the time here to try and talk through, through issues here. Right. It's much harder on a, on a stand up spot on, no, that's on a good TV point. out there when, especially when tear gas might be coming, at, <laughs> might be coming at you. True. <laughs> so I try, I try to have sympathy for the, the out of town media who have to come in and have a job to do. Right. But I just want the listeners here to, when watching their reports and their details, think very critically about it because it, mm -hmm. just because just because they're from a big time station in, in New York, L. A. Right. Doesn't mean they're going to get every. Doesn't mean they're going to get everything right here. Although they certainly that out of viewpoint of it is going to absolutely have a lot of value. That's David Stokes on the Show Me Institute, policy analyst. When can we see you? When can we? Uh, when can we read to you? Well, you can read 
anything Show Me Institute has at showmeinstitute.org, and you can listen to me here on, on Monday mornings, mostly. Mostly, until you get bumped by Jay Kanzler. <laughs> uh, 8.30, thanks, Dave.